And now, let me just take a minute, because I want to underscore, no matter how you feel about Omarosa, mark the date, uh, August 14th, 2018, the President of the United States, the leader of the free world, the planet's most powerful person, is calling an African-American woman a dog. Unfortunately, it is something that America has heard before. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. No, it wasn't. That was three years ago. Today, 20 months after being elected president, he is calling a woman a dog. At a time when we teach our children not to bully, to be respectful, the president is anything but. I mean, his own wife kicked off a campaign urging kids to be best, to keep it positive on social media. Listen to all the juvenile and hateful names he has called people since taking oath. We made a list. Loser, fraud, dumb, dumbest, dumb as a rock, crazy, flunky, low IQ, Pocahontas, fat, unhinged, low life, deranged, wacky. It, I'm just gonna stop there because this is depressing. These are all words used by the president to describe people in public on Twitter. And if you think someone is crazed and a lying low life, don't just brag that someone else fired her. Own up, Mr. President. You hired her, knowing all of this. You gave her a top job, access, and a platform. A platform that you are using to, once again, lower the bar on civility. And I have said it in the past, and I will say it again, words matter, especially when they come from the President of the United States. As we wait for the briefing to begin, let me bring in my, my panel with me now, CNN Chief Political Analyst Gloria Borger, former CIA Intelligence Officer David Priest, uh, author of the President's Book of Secrets, CNN Legal Analyst and Civil Rights Attorney Areva Martin, and CNN Political Commentator Errol Lewis, political anchor at Spectrum News. So, Gloria, I want to begin with you, because you and I were on TV, on this show, just yesterday, yeah. talking about how Trump is obsessed with talking about women's looks. But calling mm -hmm. someone a man, woman, a dog? Come on. Look, I mean, it's, look, it's disgusting. Uh, and it's very hard, I would, I would think, to turn Omarosa into a sympathetic figure. But uh, because she is a ruthless figure in her own way, and Donald Trump has managed to do that uh, very openly here by calling her this invective. He has lowered the standards of the office of the presidency. He's never understood the stature uh, that is required of a president of the United States. And it is, um, I just, it's, it's hard to describe how degrading it is uh, for her to be called that and how degrading it is for the American public to hear a president use that kind of language, not only against Omarosa, but against his political enemies, as he did during the campaign. Uh, particularly when, as you point out, he's got a spouse who is on an anti-bullying campaign, when in fact the president spends much of his time bullying not only people like Omarosa, but his own attorney general, for example. Um, th you know, this is something, unfortunately, uh, we have gotten used to, but we should never accept it. Ariva, a dog. Yeah, Brooke, you say words matter. I say actions matter. Uh, for me as a lawyer, the evidence was in on this president before he was elected. It was in on him before 2016, and he started using those despicable terms that you've just so uh, articulately uh, you know, reminded of 
us off. The evidence has been in on Trump for decades, yet people went to the polls and voted for him, and presumably Omarosa voted for him. Omarosa told us as African Americans that we should trust Donald Trump, that we should give him a chance. In fact, she said we were going to bow down before Donald Trump. So as despicable as it is for Trump to call Omarosa a dog, and I'm a mother with two daughters, so I don't want to see any man call any woman a dog, and we know what that's cold for. We, you know, let's talk about what he really wanted to call her. Mm. But I can't help but hold her accountable because she allowed herself to go into this White House to uh, perpetrate this fraud on the American people. She knew what kind of man Donald Trump was and is. And this is evidence that we've already had. So for me, what are we going to do about getting Donald Trump out of office? Because every day he sinks to a new low. Today it's a dog. Tomorrow it'll be something even more despicable that, that we, can, we can't even imagine the depths at which this man will sink. So for me, it's time to take action and get him out of the White House. Errol? Uh, you know, like, like many other people, I really see the president constantly and consistently obscene and degrading and juvenile behavior as an invitation to us to accept this as normal and to somehow get used to it and to learn to live with it and to sort of make a new set of standards for, for public officials. But I am declining that invitation, as many others have. I had an interesting chat with my 13-year-old son today, as a matter of fact. Did you? We're watching this, and he said, did he really say that? And this is, you know, my son, I take him everywhere with me. So, you know, I told him this wouldn't be acceptable from the, the pharmacist, uh, the people at the dry cleaners, the teachers, the it, principal, it, or anybody else. If someone said this at a company, you would either be fired or suspended or certainly dragged into HR. Right. And so Never. I, I, only, I could only conclude, and I would really challenge anybody to say something different, that, like, look, this is somebody who has embarrassed and disgraced himself and his office and his family. That was his choice. And so we, we all have to make uh, our own choices and urge our children to make their best choices. Yeah. This president has chosen to go down a very dark and degrading road. He's inviting us to come along with him. And no. I, I'm not going. No. Um, as we've all been talking, David Priest, there's a question to you. Uh, Omarosa has apparently just claimed that the special counsel, Robert Mueller, has interviewed her. We don't know when. What's your response to that? It doesn't surprise me. Mueller's the kind of guy who will turn over every rock he can. But what's interesting to me about that is what will she have to offer? Is she willing to open up about some of the private conversations in the White House where the president was venting about the whole Mueller investigation and was looking to obstruct justice? If so, that's fascinating, and that would, that would give him new information. On the issue of the language itself, though, we're, we're treating this, uh, very largely at least, we're treating this like it's a a bug of this presidency, that this is a strategic error on his, on his account. This is a feature of his presidency. This is the kind of language, as Gloria mentioned, that we had during the campaign. People knew what they were voting for. People knew what they were getting. And sadly, a lot of them liked it. So we don't have a situation where this is suddenly a revelation about who this president is. This is simply further evidence of who he is. And there are two main implications of that. One is politically. This isn't going to turn a tide. This is just going to reinforce people and what they believe already. But secondly, for national security, what are we seeing around the world? We're seeing a humanitarian crisis in Yemen. We're seeing China in the South China Sea flexing its muscles. And what is the president focusing on? Tweet sure. after tweet about sure. what Omarosa said. And our allies and enemies know that, and it's affecting the way we do business overseas. But in regards to Mueller and the yeah. tapes, sure, I imagine he would be interested, right, overturning any rock he possibly can. Right. But Gloria, uh, we've said this, Ariva hit on this. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. Omarosa has serious credibility issues. Well, yeah, I'm not saying she'd be a great witness for anybody by, by any stretch, but I think that if uh, Mueller, if she's telling the truth, and if she has been interviewed by Mueller, I would assume they want to know what conver it, it, does she have more tapes, uh, what conversations she might have overheard, did she did she over uh, hear the president talking about uh, the Flynn firing, or firing James Comey, or anything having to do with the Russia investigation? Does she know anything about what occurred at the Trump Tower meeting with Don Jr.? Uh, you know, so there's a whole there's a whole range of issues. But, you know, you, you know, I think if I were Mueller, I would want, if, if I were interviewing uh, Omarosa, I'd want some incontrovertible evidence 
as in a tape recording that I could use because she obviously has a credibility issue. And Brooke, right, Bob, Bob Mueller doesn't go on a fishing expedition. If there's something <laughs> right. he's going to ask her about, sure, it's to corroborate doesn't. what he knows.